just making sure I understood the technology that we have up here. First of all, I want to thank CEW so much for this wonderful award. And in particular, uh, it means a lot to me because I was a friend of uh, Carol Holland's head. And so it's wonderful also to see her family here. Um, Carol and I spent a lot of time in meetings. Uh, we were part of the President's Advisory Commission uh, on women's issues here at the University of Michigan. And um, I always knew Carol to be a visionary, an agitator, and a leader. And I just wanted to say that I think we're all made better for her having walked and worked on this campus. So thank you again so much. My title is Boldness Rules the World, Sustaining Leadership. In some cases, it's not that hard to become a leader, but the fact of the matter is, how do you sustain that? Um, and so today, I'm just going to spend a few moments talking to you about this. And then hopefully, again, I'll see you in March which is Women's History Month, and I think it's an appropriate time to talk about how do we sustain our leadership. So a good friend of mine told, told us years ago that one of the things that he had seven ups to success. Does anyone here drink seven up pop at all? Or soda, I guess, if you're from, okay. Well, if you know what I'm talking about, um, you, it's an easy way to think about things that you might want to do in order to sustain where you are. So just think about the seven ups for success. And I put them here for us to look at, um, but it certainly is something that I often remind my students. I work mainly with undergraduate first year students here at Michigan. The first thing is you got to wake up. So, you know, that's not all that easy to do sometimes for students because they are used to having perhaps parents wake them up. But now it's, uh, the ball is in their court, so to speak. So you got to wake up. You, you, not only do you have to wake up, you have to dress up. Uh, I'm not a proponent of wearing your pants slouched. I know that some people are, but I'm going to go there and just say, you got to act as if you are coming to the university for business. The second thing is you got to show up. If your professor has to be at the class, then you ought to be there too. So I'm not a proponent of missing classes and then coming in and saying, uh, can you tell me what I missed? Uh, no, I can't tell you what you missed. You need to show up. The next thing is speak up. And this is particularly relevant for us as women who often find that our voices have been muted or silenced or that we say something that is uh, just wonderful and no one says anything and then the next thing you know, someone else across the room who might be a little bit different than you says it and people are like nodding their heads. And you're sitting there thinking, I just said that. So one of the things I want to encourage us to do is if you hear a woman um, make a wonderful statement, if you're going to repeat it, give her credit for that as well. And I think that's something that we can certainly um, learn to do. The next thing is to stand up. It's not always easy to stand up and to say what you know is right. We have some horrible examples of what's happening in our Congress right now, but we don't have enough time to go into all that. But we certainly need to find some folks who have the courage to stand up and to say, hey, the emperor does not have on clothes. And I just wanted to throw that out there, and now I'll get off of my soapbox. But you all know that I'm a politician, and every now and then we just can't help it. We got to go there. The other thing is to look up. Don't be a person who's so busy taking care of your own business that you don't look up to see what's going on around you. Um, to be able to get a sense of your community, of your campus, uh, to uh, take part in that. You know, I think that getting a college education is a participatory experience and um, it's important for all of us to be able to do that. The last thing is to lift up. Many of us in here already have U of M degrees. How many people in here have a U of M degree? Just raise your hand. My, my, you all are some smart folks. <laughs> um, and, and of course, there are some other universities out there, but I'm not going to go down the list. But the fact of the matter is, um, we have those degrees, I believe, particularly because we got them from a public institution uh, paid for by the taxpayers uh, of, the, of the state, um, that it is incumbent upon us to lift up and to look back. If, um, if 
if you were able to receive that wonderful education, then it's important for you to open the door so that someone else can come in behind you. And I think if more of us think about doing that, that uh, that, that can bode well for our future. My grandmother used to say, and she was, it wasn't her own original uh, uh, saying, she got it from somebody else, but that's okay, because I like to say my grandmother used to say. But what she used to say was, um, a ship in a harbor is safe, but that's not what ships were made for. And I wondered what was she talking about, and the older I get, the more I realize that that is certainly a true statement. And it, it, what it means is sometimes you do have to take a step. You have to go where it might feel uncomfortable. And I think we're hearing that word today. And let's just encourage each other to do that uh, as well. But those aren't the only ships. And I put a, a few ships on the, on the page that I wanted to mention. And you probably, uh, over your lunch, will be able to come up with other ships that perhaps um, I didn't mention. But there's fellowship. There's relationship, friendship, kinship, scholarship, and worship. And I know where I am, and I know that there are some things that, as a public institution, we don't necessarily touch. It's like that third rail out there. But all of these, I think, are terribly important. Um, and I want you, uh, does anyone have a ship out there that perhaps I didn't, uh, didn't put on this list? Anybody? No? Oh, yes. Yes, ma'am. Stewardship. Stewardship. Incredibly important. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Um, I'm going to quickly go through these slides at this point because I was told that I got one minute. Um, but um, one of the things I do want to say to you is I just want to encourage all of us as we're thinking about sustaining our leadership or anything else in life. One of the things you really need to do when you get, in the, get up in the morning is to make up your mind to be happy. Uh, learn to find pleasure in the simple things in life. Read more. You know, when you get up in the morning and you look in the mirror, if the person in the mirror says, what are you looking at? <laughs> you can say, well, self, I think we're going to uh, make this a really good day and let's, let's get started. Um, as you can see, there are some things that I am not going to talk about right now, but that just, this, I hopefully is just going to whet your appetite. I hope to see you March 20th, uh, and we can certainly talk about all of the ships and make sure none of them are passing us by. Thank you so much.